All right, so good evening, everybody. It seems uh, registered participants are increasingly joining our today's uh, uh, webinar on inclusive education and the example of the UniClub here in Vienna. So welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Thierry. I'm from Vienna Children's uh, University office uh, and we'll be hosting this uh, webinar today. UniClub Multi Learning Experience Providing an Inclusive Learning Environment for Refugee and Migrant Minors. This is the title of our webinar. Uh, and we'll start in a couple of minutes. Uh, so we have still some minutes to go until all the registered participants have entered. And in the meanwhile, we do a little bit of uh, housekeeping and technical instructions. Uh, so I kindly request all participants to mute your PC or phone, as you see on the slide, to uh, avoid any unnecessary background noise as much as possible. Uh, switch off your video. We would definitely love to meet you somewhere, but for the webinar, it's uh, more uh, relevant maybe to focus on the people who are presenting. Uh, and you can still, if you want to, so invite other people to join the live webinar. If you click the invite button and just uh, add their email address. So if you have colleagues or peers who you would want to join the webinar, still please kindly feel free to invite them. If you have any question during the webinar, uh, you can simply enter the chat and uh, ask a question there. We will constantly monitor the questions that pop up. Uh, those question, questions we can answer from our side here, we will answer immediately. And if questions remain, we will pass them on to the presenters uh, towards the end of the seminar and then they can provide their more in-depth response to what you have asked. Um, yeah, unfortunately, due to the quality of broadcasting, we decided not to show the UniClub uh, introduction video. You have received the, the link to the video on, on YouTube uh, together with your confirmation email of your registration. So before we actually start the discussion, we kindly request you to, uh, to press the link, which you also find in the chat. I posted the YouTube uh, link in the chat as well before we started. So during the next minutes, we kindly invite you to have a glimpse at the video which is quite a nice introduction into what UniClub uh, is all about. And it also enables you uh, to uh, get a bit more background information uh, and uh, maybe follow the discussion uh, more easily. So yeah, we'll start in a couple of minutes. So uh, till then, before I will request uh, Caroline Eber to present a bit more of what Vienna Children's, uh, Vienna University Children's Office actually is. We'll, we'll wait a couple of minutes and give you the opportunity to watch the YouTube uh, video. All right, see you in a bit, thank you. So, I think we can start uh, with uh, a, a very brief introduction uh, from my side. My name is Carolina Eber. 
Uh, I'm the general manager of the Vienna University Children's Office and we are the hosts today um, here in Vienna. Uh, and uh, we are really happy to have so many participants who are interested in our project called the UniClub. Uh, and the webinar today uh, called UniClub Mutual Learning Experience, providing an inclusive learning environment for refugee and migrant minors. So we are really happy uh, that you participate in the webinar because uh, the UniClub is one of the hard projects we have here in the uh, Vienna University Children's Office. Um, and uh, we are uh, running a lot of projects uh, here. Uh, we are, our self-understanding is uh, to be an innovative platform uh, for ideas and projects in education, uh, especially with the focus on inclusion. Most of the time we are working for scientific literacy projects like the uh, Vienna Children's University and uh, the Children's University on tour. So we reach about 7,000 children uh, a year with uh, scientific literacy projects. We are also working in the field of digital literacy and media literacy. Uh, we are the education partner of the Austrian Parliament and uh, work on democracy literacy projects. And uh, now a very new topic for us, but a very uh, um, inspiring topic is also entrepreneurship education and financial literacy. So uh, we are, um, we, you see that we have a broad range uh, of uh, diverse topics, uh, but in the heart of all these topics are the people who are interested in education. Um, and uh, we are also working on an international level. We founded the uh, European Children's University Network called UCONAT. So uh, a warm welcome to all our members who are online today for the webinar. Uh, we have now more than 80 partners in 33 countries. Uh, who are all, all of them are interested in uh, innovative scientific literacy projects. Um, so um, we are happy uh, to have the chance uh, also to spread the idea and to learn from each other on an international level, also in European Union funded projects. Uh, and one of these projects is a very inspiring one. This is MultiInclude. Uh, MultiInclude stands for Multiplying Evidence-Based Strategies for Inclusion. Uh, and we are one of seven partners uh, in, uh, and for the last two years, uh, we have been working together with six uh, other organizations in Italy, uh, in Malta, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, and uh, in Sweden. So uh, this is a really international uh, approach. Uh, and we have detected and analyzed uh, uh, 70 cases uh, of inspiring practice. Uh, the UniClub, one of our, uh, our own projects, is one of these cases. So we are really happy to have now the chance to learn a little bit more uh, about the, the UniClub and to have the chance to present it, but also to give uh, the opportunity to talk to those people who are the most relevant uh, in the UniClub. These are the young people who are the students, uh, our university students and the organization team. Uh, so uh, I. Uh, I'm happy to hand over now uh, to uh, these six wonderful people who are waiting uh, for us uh, in the next room uh, and uh, who want to start. Well, I think you're ready to start uh, with uh, your presentation and your inputs. Okay. Thanks a lot, Caroline, for your introduction words. Um, now, I guess it's my turn. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon from my side in front of the screens. Thanks for having us and thanks for watching us. Uh, my name is Philipp Salzmann-Stöckel. I am the body coordinator of UniClub, and today um, I will be the host for today's webinar. Um, before I would like to introduce our participants, uh, I would like to um, tell you some words about the content of the webinar and also what the structure will be of the webinar so um, that you have an idea what you can expect from our webinar right now. Um, as the title already indicates, uh, we will mainly focus on uh, the multiple learning relations and experiences of the participants within UniClub. 
um, and by that trying to showcase the, the, the mutual and mutual character of our learning relations happening within Uniclub. Um, without revealing too much of the, con uh, the content of our webinar, I would like to highlight that we are trying to follow a, a multiple perspective approach. Why? Because um, we thought while um, um, putting together our webinar that the ones who, who were taking part in the UNICLUB and uh, who are participating in the UNICLUB um, describing, sharing their experiences is, um, will best showcase um, the vibrant aspects of the UNICLUB and what the UNICLUB is all about and why UNICLUB, at least we think, is such an uh, inclusive um, place and space to study and to learn and to get together. Um, yes, and hopefully um, uh, we, will, we will get um, you a picture, a more comprehensive picture of the only group. Um, I will start now um, giving you the structure and a little bit of, of the time frame. Um, first, um, Daniela, um, she, she will, she, she's the coordinator of the UNICLUB and will, in, will be introduced or introduces herself later on, um, will give a short description on the historical part on history and also mainly focusing on the development of the project and the project tracks of UNICLUB. Um, and then we will come to, let's say, the, the heart of our webinar. Um, we will open the plenary session and we will have um, the shared experiences and insights of our participants, um, mainly uh, our buddies and our students who are coming to, uh, to the UNICLUB. Um, and also I would say functioning as representatives for, for the UNICLUB and we are really happy to have them uh, today. Um, so this will be the main part of, of the webinar and as Caroline already indicated, right now you as the audience, you will have the chance to, um, to put in your um, questions in the chat. Uh, many of them will be uh, answered, I guess, by Caroline and uh, uh, Chris already. Um, and then we will, have the, um, we will have the opportunity to maybe pick out three or four questions and, and have them for the plenary session afterwards, um, which will be about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then we will hand over to Carolina to have uh, the closing words for the webinar. So this, um, like, uh, this will, this is this is um, how we, we plan to structure the webinar. And now I would like uh, to hand over the word already to our participants. Uh, uh, and maybe uh, you want to introduce yourself. Um, Rita, do you want to start with the introduction? Hello, I'm Rita Armand, and I'm 18 years old. I've been at the Uni Club for about two years because of a recommendation of a friend. Uh, my name is Philip. Um, I'm, nine, I'm 23 years old um, and I study philosophy. Um, yeah, and I come here to work as a buddy once a week. Hello everyone, I'm Zoya Mini, 18 years old. I'm attending seventh grade in, uh, in Birgitten Art Gymnasium and I'm since two years in Monaco. Um, my name is Katarina. I'm 22 years old. I'm studying Latin and English to become a teacher and I've been participating here at the Uni Club for about one and a half years. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Daniela Marzov. Um, I'm 41 years old, if you want to know, uh, and I'm uh, the coordinator of the Uni Club program. And my job now is to give you a short introduction uh, to the program UniClub. Um, I will use the five W questions to guide you through this introduction. Actually, I will only use four of them, starting with what? So, um, what is UniClub? UniClub is a program uh, that provides learning support for young people um, with refugee or migration experience. Um, the aim is to accompany the students on their educational path um, towards a higher education. And currently about uh, 100 students join uh, on a regular basis. That means they take part um, in the activities every week. 
um, Uniclip offers a place uh, where the students can do their homework, where they can study, learn, where they can get support, uh, where they can get advice, and where they can meet friends, uh, where they can learn together, and where they can join in various activities. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, participation is for free, and all this is possible because of a uh, strong co collaboration uh, with the Center for Teacher Education at the University of Vienna. Um, so up to 90 teacher uh, training students join UNICLUB every semester. Uh, they offer learning support, um, but they are learners as well, as we will hear later as well. Um, my next, next question is where? Um, so UNICLUB is located in the center of Vienna. Um, it's easy to reach by public transport, by metro. Um, we're going to talk about that later as well. But what is maybe interesting to know about Vienna, um, German is the main language uh, used in schools. And uh, about 50% of the pupils in schools um, don't speak German as their first language. Uh, my next question here is why um, or how did it all start? Uh, we started the program in 2015, uh, a year when many young people came to Austria as refugees. Um, the team of the children's office had the need to take action back then. Uh, we met to share ideas and Within a month, we opened up a room for young people, um, a room for young people that have a strong interest, interest in learning. Um, so we opened UniClub in October 2015, and since then, about six to 700 students and about 600 buddies took part in the program. Which leads me to my next question, that is who? Um, so, uh, yeah, there's people sitting with me on this table um, and we are kind of the representatives for all the other participants of UNICLUB who can't be here with us today, unfortunately. Um, so, first I want to talk about the students. Um, those are young people aged between 13 and 19. As I said, um, all of them have migration or refugee background or experience. Um, um, the group is quite diverse actually. Some of them uh, come from countries like Syria or Afghanistan and arrived in Austria four to five years ago. Um, some of them have lived here since their early childhood. Um, so they have various backgrounds and of course various, various stories, um, different needs. Um, uh, most of them do attend high school in Austria. Uh, they are interested in a higher education and many want to go to university one day. Um, I can say that all of you, <laughs> all of them are very ambitious, very interested in learning um, and what is important to know, they join UNICLUB on a voluntary basis. Uh, which brings me to the next who, which is the buddies. Um, most of the volunteers are teacher training students, as I said before. Um, they study different subjects and their work as volunteer in UNICLUB is integrated in the curriculum at the university, so they would gain credits for that. Um, and also, they have the chance to reflect their experiences in UNICLUB in their seminars at university. Um, usually, they support UNICLUB for one semester, but we are quite proud that about 25 to 30 percent um, of the students or of the teach training students um, would stay or would continue their work after that semester. Um, and then, of course, there's also people like Philip here, uh, who, who is not going to be a teacher, but, um, or I guess so, you can tell us <laughs> about that later. But, uh, so he joins on an entirely voluntary basis. Um, I think I'll 
enthusiasm, we see. <laughs> uh, and then there's the, the staff, the, the coordinating team, the other Philip and me. So we have two Philips in the team, maybe you already realize that. Um, so Philip, who moderates uh, the session today, is also our buddy coordinator. Me, I'm the project coordinator, and then we have another colleague who is not here with us today. She, it's Eva, who supports us during the learning activities twice a week. And then there's also Wood, who's our psychologist in the team. She offers support for the team, for the bodies, and also for the young students in difficult situations, in situations of crisis. And then, of course, there's Carolina and all the rest of the team of the children's office. As Carolina mentioned before, she said Unicloop is kind of a half project for the children's office. We're quite happy that um, many other team members also support us in several situations. Um, my next question, and I guess my last question, is another what? Um, so I'm going to talk uh, very briefly about the specific formats that we offer. Um, and I have another few sheets for you because I think you don't you will not know those words. Um, so our first format is Learn Club or Learning Club. Um, Learn Club opens its doors twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, it's an open learning setting, so students and buddies would come. Uh, the students have the chance to do their homework, to get support, to use the computers, to work silently. Um, whatever they need in that moment. Our next um, format is the study buddy program. Uh, so we also have uh, a program that offers one-to-one -one, uh, learning support. Uh, so Philippe, our buddy coordinator, matches the buddies and the students in the beginning of the semester, and they then meet once a week and um, focus on, for example, their the English uh, tasks. Then we have uh, study groups. Um, so uh, groups of students um, meet once a week um, uh, and gather for the math club, for the German club, for the Italian club, club um, yeah, to focus on, on those subjects. And in addition to those uh, very uh, learning focused uh, formats, we also offer workshops and excursions. Um, we would visit, visit museums, go on field trips, um, but also visit different departments of the university, um, depending on the specific interests of the students. Um, yeah, and uh, have additional. Um, offers um, for the students and the bodies. Um, that's what I wanted to tell you about Unicloop. Um, so you have uh, a vision and you know what you're, we're going to talk about now. I will hand over to our moderator again. Well, thanks for, for the description. Thanks for taking us um, with, uh, into the house of the Uniclub is describing like uh, the different aspects. And I think it's important to get to know some of the wordings we are using and especially, of course, uh, the meanings of, of, the, of the wordings uh, we are using and to easily um, follow us now um, um, with the discussion we will have right now. So as I mentioned before, um, we really think that this is our, this is the heart of the webinar as now the stage will be uh, handed over to our participants. Um, I already mentioned the, the word meaning and uh, I really want to start um, off with the question, um, what the Unicube really means to you? Um, what is the meaning um, for you when it comes to Uniclub? Rita, do you want to start with the question? For me, Uniclub, on the one hand, is a place where I can study without any distractions. In addition, I can always ask the study buddies, for example, Katharina and Philip, for help. 
On the other hand, Unicop is also a place where we celebrate very special moments or events, for example, Christmas. That's why I believe that Uniclub is very unique. Okay, thanks a lot. So you want to go on? Yeah, since I spent a lot of time here, uh, Uniclub is for me like my second school. And I would go a step farther and say it's like my second family because I spent, as I said, I spent a lot of time here. I study here, I meet my friends and I spend my free time here. And especially I, I get supported here, so yeah, thanks. It's, it's a special place for me. Okay, thanks, so Philip. You want to go on? Yeah. Um, also for me, um, Uniclub is a very special place. It's a place of so many encounters um, of different ages, of different cultural backgrounds, of different religion, non-religions. So there is a lot of diversity. Um, but there's not only the, the personal dimension. Um, for me, there's also a political dimension because it's um, a chance to actively engage in society. Thanks a lot. Katharina. I agree, in fact, a lot with you, Philip. For me, it's also something very social. It's, it's a meeting place in some kind of way. And also, it's an opportunity for me to pass on a bit of the um, educational privileges I myself have received and would really like to share. Daniela, would you like to wrap up? Yeah, well, for me, um, actually, Uniclip is the place I go every day for work <laughs> and where I like to go for work. Uh, what I love about my work is that I can do both, um, the coordinating work, the organi organizing the programs and so on, and also work with the students and with the bodies, of course. So um, I would say that uh, Uniclip uh, is one of the things that gives me to my life. Okay, so thanks for the first um, round of, of answers. Um, some of you already mentioned um, the word place, space, when it comes to Uniclub because it provides place and space. Um, so, um, and, and this specific place, um, I think strongly um, is, is filled and strongly is created by, by the participants, by you. Um, so I would like to ask you, how, how would you describe the, the place and space of one clip? Um, Philip, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I'm going to start. Um, Uniclub is a place of um, very um, respectful communication. And I think an important um, aspect of that is um, um, the, the room or the, the space that is uh, given to this project. So most of the time, uh, twice a week, we are here in this building. We have a whole floor um, with different rooms, um, you know, bigger rooms where you can um, study as a group or also smaller rooms who are more intimate and you can have more private uh, conversations. Um, we have the kitchen, which is for us buddies uh, the first place we go to when we when we come here and we slice back vegetables together and you know um, talk to each other and between the, the learning sessions there's um, a break where we all come together and eat some healthy food and sometimes rarely not so healthy food um, and yeah we have also like a kind of living room with sofas um, and all in all it's um, I think these um, um, material or spatial uh, conditions um, support um, this communicative um, atmosphere that is here. It's very comfortable and cozy. I also wanted to add that some students play games and they have a lot of fun in order to cope with all the stress they receive from school. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. Katarina, do you want to add something on that? Yes, um, I personally believe that uh, Unit Club is not only bound to these rooms that we have here in this building. Of course, they play an important role, but I think that we as participants also carry Unit Club to other places. For example, on our workshops and excursions, when we, for example, go to museums, 
that's also some, somewhere where Uniclub takes place or in parks, for example, in the summer. It's also a space for Uniclub. So, thanks a lot. So, it means that, that uh, the Uniclub is not only like the material place, it's also um, the symbolic and, and the relations between all the participants and sometimes Uniclub even um, crosses the boundaries of the buildings as we enlarge and go through themes, as you mentioned, um, and I think that pretty much uh, sums it up um, perfectly when it comes from a space perf uh, perspective. Um, yes, th the next point would be um, the question um, about participation. Um, you as participants, um, and I, I strongly believe that through your participation, you really take part in, in creating this space, you know, and creating uh, um, the different aspects of, of um, Uniclub. So, um, my question to you would be, who, who really participates in Uniclub and how would you describe your contributions to, to Uniclub? Um, Rita, do you want to start with the question? The participants of Uniclub are the staff, study buddies and students just like my brother, my friends and I. I also wanted to add that I got to know a lot of new people and we help each other on a daily basis. By helping each other, we gained a lot of experience. The reason why is that we learn much more through explaining interesting topics to our friends and we also have to cope with their problems. And that leads to the fact that our character develops over some time because you need to be more patient, you need to show more understanding towards your friends. And this is also the case for the relation between a study buddy and a student. Thanks a lot. Philip, you have wanted to add something. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've already <clears throat> mentioned the, the plurality among, among the students. Um, and there is, of course, also uh, diversity um, among us um, buddies because some of us come here, as Daniela um, mentioned earlier, um, as part of their studies. Um, some of them get stuck <laughs> here. <laughs> Very um, and um, yeah, other one as, as myself. Um, I'm a friend of mine told me about Uniclub, and then I just came here and um, got stuck also. So it's it's wonderful. So. Well, yeah. Thanks a lot. So you both um, you, you tackled already um, aspects and points of, of learning and learning relations, um, which which um, brings me to the next point, and I would uh, like to hand it to you, Katarina, as you uh, might be able to give us some insights um, when it comes to perspectives of a teacher, and then um, and of course. Um, uh, um, combined uh, body teacher perspective. Yes, in fact that fits very well because we've already received a question in the chat um, which is about uh, the experience um, that buddies gain here and how um, it prepares us for our future teaching jobs. So for me um, the uni club is a place to try out teaching methods to gain a lot of experience in for example explaining contents to students and um, just trying out different things and also what's very important for me is the flexibility I gain here. For example, when I think about um, a typical land club evening, it's almost impossible to talk about typical because it's, it's so diverse. Sometimes I'll study with the same student for multiple hours and sometimes I'll be rotating between five students, checking back, correcting something, seeing how they're doing without me, giving some input and then moving on. So this flexibility is something I think that will really come in handy also in our future teaching jobs. So which means... Um... <laughs> Uh, so to, to, to wrap it up, to sum it up, somehow you were somehow saying that, um, it, that the typical is more or less the untypical when it comes to Learn Club and, and I think uh, it's, it's of course the heterogeneous group you are dealing with um, during Learn Club. 
and also you you never know um, what what is um, what is needed. So uh, thanks a lot for for sharing um, your experience and your perspective, especially from a, from a teacher side uh, point of view. Um, so yeah, um, when when you think um, like from your perspective as um, being a minor coming coming to um, Uni Club, um, being a student trying to get help, I would be interested in the difference when it comes to if when you compare um, a place like Uniclub with a place like in school, but what would be the difference in, in the learning relations? Uh, also in the school we did just a lot and not have to make our homework with our exercises and naturally in the school this is stricter uh, is stricter than here. Here we don't uh, we don't have the feeling that we are studying with a teacher. We are not afraid of asking questions. We are not ashamed when we don't understand something, and we can speak freely. Fr and uh, especially with my study buddy, I talk. I can talk about everything, uh, important things like uh, political issues, like important issues in our so society. And she listened to me, and um, the. And the amazing thing is that she learns to, uh, new things to uh, my perspective and I learn new things to her perspective. And that's really amazing. We can, we can exchange our uh, opinions together. Thanks a lot. You can pass me, but you all can hear me. Thanks a lot as you, via your input, I think you really highlighted um, what, I, what I mentioned before, the mutual character of, of the learning relations that are taking place here in Uniclub. Mm -hmm. And also, which is somehow pressing uh, to hear the same way, um, um, that, that learning actually should be and could be uh, something really positive really that gives you strength and and uh, um, you, as you said you, you both benefited um, while during your learning situation so I think this is like this should be this this should be learning right so you, you're not afraid you know you, you want to grow you, you get information you actually you grow together while learning something so I think it's kind of sad that um, you have um, you have places where people are afraid of uh, instead of asking freely you know so but thanks for thanks for highlighting um, this aspect of Uniclub which I think we all share and I think it's um, one one beautiful aspect of, of Uniclub. Um, well um, now actually uh, we would have our last um, topic um, as you all know um, um, we, we're trying to get across um, the inclusive character and the inclusive atmosphere on, of Uniclub. Um, but I want to get it a little bit broader right now and ask you what would be your vision when it comes to an inclusive society? Um, how would you picture inclusion within society? So just pretend or not pretending actually we, we are watched by, by many people right now. So what what would it be that you want to pass on? Um, and what is your vision? What is your wishes when it comes to inclusion? Um, Philip, do you want to start? Okay. Um, hmm. As you said, um, what I wanted to, to pass on, I think um, one thing that um, I learned here is, um, is to listen. And I think it's um, very important when you talk to each other, it's, it's not only an exchange of opinions, but it's also of, of understanding maybe of translation into other words. And, and, and these, I think these, uh, an, an inclusive society is one where we listen to one another. Um, and, and the second thing is that I think it's nonetheless important, not on this personal level, but also on a, on a broader, um, on a broader dimension that you also, for example, vote um, parties who um, try to fight for, for equality or for more solidarity. Okay, thanks a lot. Katerina. Well, in my opinion, um, inclusive society, well, a step towards an inclusive society 
would be that more people become aware of privileges they themselves have. For example, educational privileges in, in our case here, in our setting, and not just become aware of them, I believe, but also getting involved somehow. For example, in the Uni Club and um, many other organizations which also do um, amazing and very important work, I believe. Thanks. Daniela, do you want to go first? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Let's use the microphone when it's here <laughs> on that side of the table. Um, yeah, you were, were talking about different in, in initiatives doing great work. Um, so I think all of us here on the table, but uh, also everybody out there uh, participating in that webinar um, is interested in promoting inclusion. Um, so I would like to invite everybody to share ideas, to get in contact uh, with us, with the UNICE team, uh, and also the buddies and students here. Um, we're still on the, on the chat uh, of the webinar right now, uh, but then we also have the chance to use the multi-include platform to get in touch, um, or maybe if you come to Vienna one day, come visit us in UNICE club, uh, be part of our team, of our group. Uh, there's always things to do here. Pass over to Philip. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite hard already to, to uh, say, to add something on that. And, and of course, um, you will have the last words on um, your visions on inclusion. Um, I, but still, I would like to take a step back and um, I think inclusion all starts, um, especially because I, I, um, I worked in a human rights field uh, for several years, so I would like to look at it from a human rights perspective. I think um, inclusion all starts with accessibility and availability, which means um, no matter how inclusive and supportive a space or a place might be, uh, without being really accessible and available for, for the people, um, for the targeted groups actually, um, it will not really function. So I think um, it's still a long way to go to make places, initiatives, etc. are really accessible and, and available. So I think we really have to start there. And yes, now I would like to give the last words uh, to you both. So yeah, you want to, you want to start? Yes, I would like to see more unigroups uh, in Austria, in Vienna, for supporting more teenagers. And I will, and I want to say people should support Uniclub because uh, they work really hard to support teenagers and uh, for uh, for continue and for improving their work, they need also supporting. And I really, I really want to, I want, really want to. Tell the people that she, they should also help us doing this. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, it's all yours to stay. Please, Rita. Rita. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, I personally want all the people to know that being kind and helping each other is a way to fulfill your character. Um, the reason why is that every person influences your life in some kind of way and it's that simple if you show positivity you will even receive more of it well thanks a lot uh, actually now we would have time um, to to open up the floor for our audience we we already received some questions um, i haven't seen them um, okay um, Okay, so um, uh, the first question would be, do schools and teachers know about UNICLUB? Um, I don't know who, who, who wants to begin or who knows about answering this question. Um, do you feel like um, having answers on the question? Otherwise I would pass it to, to Daniela maybe. Actually for me it's quite interesting to know about that, uh, asking the students in the in in this round, do, do you hear about the club in, in schools or do 
schools or teachers know about Unicraft? I would like to start <coughs> off because um, my school did not know about Unicraft and I just asked my friend for help and she recommended the Unicraft to me and that's why I'm here and I'm very thankful. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I have um, Yes, I'm also glad that I'm here and my friend uh, recommended me a media Uniqlo and I'm really thankful and glad to use Uniqlo for helping to improve my knowledge. But are you, are you talking about in school um, about Uniqlo? Well, like, you, like you're saying, oh, I have to prepare my homework, I only go to, to Uniqlo. Do teachers know that you are here and learning here? Um, sadly not, but my friends know about Uniqlo. Okay. Mine too. Okay. My teacher don't know about Uniqlo, but my friends already, yeah. D Dale, do you want to? Yeah, maybe yeah, I want to add something, but <coughs> I, I really like the way you answered the question, but because I have the same picture that maybe not the teachers know about Uniqlo, but you know, it's a peer-to-peer -peer thing. Um, so you will bring your friends, I'm sure, in the classrooms, you talk about Uniqlo because you talk about where, how, where did I do my homework, how did I come up with the idea for this presentation or whatever. But you know, not, it's not always the teachers <laughs> that needs to send people <laughs> to certain programs. Um, yeah, and what I can add from an organizing perspective, and actually I have another question here coming in. <laughs> Um, that matches to that subject, um, asking asking for for numbers. So how many bodies? How many how many students? I, I already mentioned that before. <coughs> but what I can say is that when we opened up UniClub in 2015, we um, tried to spread the word, um, to give information to um, re re relevant multiplicators. Uh, we had regular um, regular emails uh, to uh, quite a big group of people, but then very quickly Uniclub was cool. <laughs> so actually, so since the, since our first uh, Uniclub, since our first uh, land group, um, where twenty um, students participated, um, yeah, it was. It was never less than 20 and um, so that's why we don't really spread this information widely because you know we can't really answer the needs. Uh, as I said before, um, about 50% of, of the pupils uh, in, in Vienna um, don't speak German as their first language. So actually, all of them would be <laughs> possible participants of yeah. Uniclub. Uh, so, um, and that was nice what you said before. So yeah, there should be more Uniclubs. There should be more. Um, actually, in Vienna, there's there is a lot of help for um, for students until the age of about 14. And the ones that really want to, I don't know, want to go for a higher education, want to go to university one day, um, they don't really got, have a lot of support. Um, so again, to repeat the numbers, um, at the moment we have about 100 students that come here regularly. Um, so once a week, twice a week, three times a week, um, and we have about 90 bodies uh, that support us every semester. So there, there would be a, uh, another question, um, which first place, I guess, is direct to, to Soya and Rita, um, and it's about the parents' in, uh, parents' involvement. How do your parents know about uh, Uniclub, what you're doing um, after schools, like, like Daniela mentioned, uh, and I would even uh, even rise the number, because some of them are like uh, even four or five times uh, in, uh, in, in, during the afternoons in Uniclub. So, um, yeah, uh, what about the parents' involvement? And, and I think uh, maybe, Daniela, you can, you can add on that as well. But, yeah, maybe from your yeah, pers like personal perspective, off. yeah. Um, 
I spend a lot of time at Uniqlo and my parents really like it because I always study much better than at home because my um, my brother and my sister they're very loud sometimes so I need a place to study without any distractions and my parents are very thankful for that. Okay, thanks. So you want also to... mine, my mother, and most of the time here and I'm studying and she's really glad that I study and not, um, I'm not at home watching movies or something <laughs> like that. It's really, it's really fine for her. Also, she's, she's happy. So they, um, um, generally they know where you're going <laughs> and, and they're good with it, right? I mean, they are not yeah. coming with you or... No, or she knows yeah. here and she's, it's a safe place, I think. And yeah. I think that is important as well. We didn't really mention it because uh, we talked about how nice and how friendly, respectful the atmosphere is. But um, also, I guess we, we can we can say it right here or mention it that it's it's a safe space for for all of us. And and uh, um, yeah, I think that's that's important as well. Daniela, do you want to like from? I can yeah, I can add something on the parents issue from an organizational uh, point of view as well. Um, actually, um, Uniqlo, like, do you know, when we came up with the idea, we had like a month to open up, and we many things just developed. Um, and in the beginning, we didn't really know like what role the parents would play. Um, and at the moment, which is it's quite surprising that we don't really see the parents a lot. Actually, I don't know all your parents. Um, so uh, as I said before, the, the, the students come here uh, on a voluntary basis. So it's not the teachers who, se who send them. It's not the parents who send them. Um, but then on the other hand, of course, the parents need to have the feeling that it's a safe place and it's a good place. Um, so of course, sometimes uh, uh, we deal with questions like the parents are not so sure um, because I don't know, maybe one of you behaves bad at home and then uh, <laughs> you didn't go to uni club because you know the parents don't know are you like really learning there or are you just socializing with your friends uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so of course of course there are parents that are more strict than other parents and of course sometimes we have to say we as an organizing team um, we are also kind of advisors for and like trust persons for for the students. Um, so then, you, you know, there's also always the possibility that we talk to the parents or meet the parents or they come here and have a look at Uniqlo. Usually that doesn't really happen, but then sometimes it's just like talking to the students, telling them so how to deal with their parents' um, worries, for example. Yeah. Actually, we um, would have two more questions, which are kind, kind of more directed to, to us. So I, I would ask if, if there's any uh, open questions to the plenary session. No. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the first question would be, <clears throat> can you cater for special needs students, um, um, for example, being blind or deaf? Um, would you like to go on? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, we try to answer the needs of the students in a very individual way, basis. So all the support we can give depends on what we can do, what our bodies can do, um, on the setting, on, on the needs we um, of course, sometimes we have this question because some of the students coming from areas uh, of war um, might have war injuries. So, um, for example, they can't hear that well. Um, then, yeah, we try to uh, 
deal with that situation, of course, um, we have, for example, in that case, we have the chance to say, okay, now uh, this is the work I really try to focus, but it's, it's quite loud, uh, the surrounding, actually it often is quite loud, the surrounding in Uniclub, so then there might be the chance to, I don't know, in the afternoon, use, use an office um, room uh, of a colleague who's not there. Or so we try to be flexible, yeah. But also, I would, I, I don't know, it's my interpretation of this question right now, but I think also that the question somehow um, was directed to structural and organizational uh, services provided by us for, for um, students who are in special needs, and from that, we don't have any bodies who, um, um, who can work with, with blind students or, or um, deaf students. So, I guess, yeah. Please. And in fact, maybe I'd like to correct you a bit because I know one, one buddy who's been here a long time who actually is quite fluent in Austrian Sign Language. Um, I myself am studying it and far from fluent, but hopefully one day I will be. And I think that's something um, the Unicode does and is very good at. It's adapting. When we're faced with a situation, we try to deal with it. So. This is, I think, what we would do with such a situation. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add, like, <laughs> to have a broader perspective. And actually, it's because, you know, it's, we're talking about inclusion here. Um, so, as I mentioned before, UniClub um, specifies in um, supporting young students that uh, want to, um, uh, that are on the way to a higher education. And unfortunately, I, I have to say that, uh, yeah, still access is not that easy um, for, for pupils um, with special needs. On one, one hand, on the other hand, I think maybe they, they would be in, in, they would have other offers and they would maybe be in a structure, maybe they would um, have offers in schools. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's why we are not that much confronted with that question. But thanks for that, um, it's something we, yeah. we can still think about and work on. Well, uh, I just... Uh... <laughs> Uh, Katharina and Daniela, especially Katharina, thanks for uh, uh, um, answering this question more elegantly than I did. <laughs> and I think adaption is a, is a good good point when it comes to Uniclub and um, um, fulfilling the needs, uh, the individual needs of, of participants in Uniclub. Um, we only have five minutes left. Um, there is another question uh, between the link of scientific literature uh, and Uniclub. Uh, so, Daniela, would you like to say something? And if you want to. Yeah, so I think this is my question because um, I kind of feel as the link between scientific literacy and the Unicla. Uh, historical point of view. Um, so before I did Uniclub, um, I worked in several other projects of the children's office, um, focusing on scientific literacy. Um, for example, children's university um, and children's university on tour. Uh, for us as a team, um, the question of how to, uh, how to include um, all children uh, was always very important because uh, we realized very quickly that with a program called Children's University um, would first would um, address the families with an academic background. Um, but then, of course, it was all about access and we were interested in including all and addressing dis disadvantaged children um, as well. Um, and actually we were very successful, I would say. We developed new formats, like going to the parks um, in areas where the children with, with disadvantaged background just lived and played. And we 
engage them in our scientific um, communication programs. Um, and we are talking about children like from seven to 12 years then. And then we kind of realized, okay, it's nice to address those kids and to do programs with them and they might be interested and aware of university and of maybe of possibilities, possibility to study one day. But then, you know, there's a big gap between 12 and uh, 18, 19. Um, and um, actually, it's not only about uh, raising interest um, in university, in science, uh, but because there's a lot of uh, Lots of obstacles, I would say. So what we what we realize, um, the kids that are interested to have the chance to go to university one day, they need support, and that's what we do in Unicrit now. Um, we really try to give them on a daily basis the support they need to, um, yeah, to to do their exams and to have the chance to go to university one day, and. I want to add that we still do scientific uh, literacy programs as well, but um, I have to confess at the moment it's quite a small part of UniClub, um, just out of the reason that everybody has to study that hard. So at the moment um, we organize programs and not so many students have the chance to participate because they have to focus on their studies for school. Thanks. Over one more time to me. Well, thanks a lot. Um, uh, thanks a lot also for um, now um, answering the, the questions from from the audience. Uh, thanks for posing us uh, and giving us the questions. And yeah, my last word uh, would be uh, to thank you guys for being here and really um, sharing your um, visions, your insights and your positions when it comes to Uniclip, why you are here, why you feel um, good being uh, a partic participant um, in the Uniclip. Um, oh, now it would be my turn to hand over one more time to Caroline and um, uh, the opportunity to have the last words. Thanks for watching us. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful half an hour of inspiration. Uh, you really, all six of you, you really have to be proud of yourself. Uh, just to mention, uh, none of the six is a native speaker, so um, many thanks to you uh, that you are uh, were happy to participate uh, in this uh, activity. Uh, Great work, great work. Um, and I especially want to thank uh, Soya and Rita uh, because I know normally you were in school uh, and I know how important school is. Uh, so many, many thanks uh, that uh, you were, uh, you, you participated in the, uh, this webinar. Uh, and it was really an inspiration. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, a big thank you to the audience. There were so many questions uh, in the background uh, and uh, so much interest. Uh, we are happy uh, to provide all information we have. So please feel free to contact us. Uh, I already posted uh, the email address. Uh, send an email to info at uniclub.at. Uh, and we are happy to answer all the questions uh, uh, as soon as we uh, provide all the information. Uh, and uh, you can also have a, a look at the YouTube video about the UniClub. Uh, you will find uh, more detailed information about the UniClub uh, on, the, uh, uh, in the, on the website of MultiInclude. Um, uh, it's one of the 70 inspiring cases. Feel free to just uh, make research uh, on uh, all the other inspiring cases because there are a lot of other grassroots initiatives uh, in the collection of inspiring cases which are really, really great to read. Uh, and uh, I just um, uh, also want to inform you that the MOOC has already started uh, on inclusive education. So all of you are invited to participate in the MOOC. Uh, and get a certificate on inclusive education. You will find the link on, on the website of Multi-Include. So, uh, 
a big thank you also on Ivana, uh, who was uh, behind the scenes, a very important uh, help for this webinar, and also Cyril, uh, who was behind the scenes here in Vienna, uh, behind the camera. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, just one more information, and also, of course, Chris, he's sitting next to me and you can't see him, uh, but he was also very supportive. And he just gave me a reminder that I forgot to mention the scoring matrix, the multi-include matrix, which is also available on the website. So you will find a lot more stuff on inclusive education on the website. Uh, so we are, thanks a lot for your, um, for your questions. Thanks a lot for joining the session uh, and I hope that uh, we, uh, you have now some new ideas in your mind and we can stay in contact with all of you. Bye-bye.